fear of poison or the fear of someone breaking into your home or whatever the fear is, it is all about controlling our minds. So how do we break through? And, and what can we do when we think about the Acadia and how can we share this with people? Well, it ties very, very strongly to the work that we're dealing with in terms of bringing forward the canons of cognitive law. Now, you know that one of the weapons, one of the most popular weapons of the courts now is the psychoval. If you stand up there and even attempt to evoke the rights that are laid out in the Constitution, the judges will whack a psych evaluation on you. If you seek to stand up there and even ask the judge if he or she is conducting the case under an oath, they'll whack a psych eval on you. If you attempt in any fashion to be anything other than a doleful slave, they'll whack a psych eval on you. So clearly psychology has become the du jour weapon of the courts. Again, psychology, dealing with the mind. But when you look at psychology, it doesn't, in fact, even say it's the mind. It is about the behaviour, the observation of behaviour and the norms of behaviour. In other words, they are using the results of behaviour to claim a norm, to change the environment, to control the mind. Psychology is, and I, I say this with the greatest respect to anyone that's learnt it or teaches it, psychology is nothing more than a formal system of mind control. Truly. Self-perpetuating, self-fulfilling. Well, let, let's look at then what cognitive law is helping us understand in ending fear once and for all. If I said to you that you can't die, you can never die. Now, providing I could explain that to you and how that worked, then whatever the system puts on you would probably wash off a lot easier because the ultimate fear, the ultimate fear in nature and in ourselves is fear of death. Always has been. Flight or fright. The fear of death is the greatest motivator or the fear of dying or the fear of pain are the greatest motivators for action. Well, what does the Eucadian information provide to us? If you've gone through the ecclesiastical deed poll process, then on those documents, the first words are, we, the divine immortal spirit. The first words, divine immortal spirit, it says right there, you are divine, you are immortal, and you are already spirit, already, apart from the flesh. So what are we saying? The flesh dies, clearly, in the dream. All matter in the dream dies. And by dream, I mean universe. And by this, I mean life is a dream, but a dream has rules. This is the oldest philosophy of the Greeks, of the Sumerians, of all indigenous cultures. And if you're struggling to say, well, you can say life is a dream, but prove to me life is a dream. Matter by law, by the rules of physics, cannot exist without the rules associated with it. Why? Because without rules, there would be chaos. Matter requires the rules for matter to function, cooperate, and interact effectively. So matter cannot exist without rules. In reality, in dimension, rules mean nothing without matter. There are no rules without matter. People think that space can exist without, without objects. It can't. There is no perfect vacuum in space. Without an object, there is no space. Space is the thing between things. So in reality, rules can't exist without matter. So how do you solve what came first, rules or matter? Because something had to come first. Well, matter can't exist in theory 
without rules. Because matter always needs rules, whether it be a theoretical model or a practical model. But rules, ideas, awareness, thought can, in theory, in theory, exist without matter. Because rules, in theory, can then create things. Ideas, in theory, can create things. And it's why, if it wasn't true, if this wasn't true, then the invention of the car would be impossible. The invention of the light bulb would be impossible. The invention of Eucadia would be impossible. But it's not impossible. And the way to explain this is the only model that explains rules and matter existing in reality and rules also existing in theory is a dream. Life is a dream. The universe is a dream. And when we look at the levels, we are talking about dreams within dreams within dreams, universes within universes, dimensions within dimensions, environments within environments. All of it is a dream in motion. And all of it can be affected by thought. Hence, government, control of the mind. If you realized how powerful you are, if people realized how powerful their minds can be when properly motivated, there is no way on earth these people would still be where they are. No way. It is only because they have tricked us for centuries in believing we are powerless that they have stayed where they are. Life is a dream, but a dream has rules. Okay, well then let's go back to these questions we were saying. We understand that, that nature dictates that our body is mortal. We're born, we die. We understand, and we spoke about this the other day, that our mind is derived from the physicality of our body, the triple neural system. But also our mind is created and has a spark with it of something more, that spark being our spirit, our soul. Now, one of the confusions, again, I would suggest to you deliberate, that exists throughout there, and, and I haven't made it as clear as I should be, is that the mind and the spirit are not equitable. They're different things. The mind is a product of the spirit and the physical. It is the grey. It is the thing that exists between two worlds, between the physical world and the ethereal world. It, it reaches the boundary. It is the one thing that is supernatural. Incredibly, our mind is the one proof of the supernatural we see every day. You close your eyes and you think of a place. Think of a beach. See it. Feel it. Now tell me where that thought is. Sure. You can look to your brain and say, well, if I had a, a head sensory system on, I could see all the neurons firing. If I had some detection, I could see all the uh, neurotransmitters firing. But where is that beach? Because I can see it, I can feel it. Where is it? Well, they can say that it is a, an aberration. They can say that it is a trick. They can say whatever they like. But when you think it, it is somewhere. And where is it? It is nowhere that we can measure and see and quantify. Your thought is proof of the supernatural. Rene Descartes, people quite even say, I think, therefore I am, and they miss the first part of that. I doubt, therefore I think, I think, therefore I am. Your thought is proof, is proof of the supernatural, the power of the mind. Well, one of the things that they have removed from us is an understanding that the most ancient cultures believed. And I have to say that I was in the same boat. And I'm talking about re-inspiration. Not reincarnation, because reincarnation implies that somehow the spirit comes back and everything's fine, just a different body. And I reject that. I reject the fact of nature asking for a repeat performance. Everything in nature has a purpose. Everything in life has a purpose. 
So re-inspiration is the idea that the spirit can re-inspire life back into a mind and create and help create that mind. Well, ancient belief systems, the, the Hindus, again, the, the Druids, the oldest cultures believed in this concept that the spirit can spark a return to earth, that your flesh body, whether it was tasered or shot by some police militia, that that is not the end of your spirit's opportunity to experience life. And indeed, that is not the end of the journey of your immortal mind, your mind and your spirit being separate. Instead, the spirit may choose, and in some cases does choose, to experience more than one life, more than one, and help create more than one mind. So the spirit may, in fact, be connected to more than one mind over life, but never more than one at the same time. Whereas a mind will always be connected to one spirit. So they removed this from our belief system. They offered us at the last days that the dead shall rise. Well, we know what the dead shall rise means now, given the Sessa KV trust system, whether they realize it or not. The dead shall rise means the end of their system, a system that believes that we are dead. The judges wear the robes of the gali, the reapers, the old attendants of the city of the dead, the city of Ur. They wear them. They don't wear them because they could have picked anything. They wear those because they play and believe and are happy to promote the fiction that we're dead. We're not dead, but their system believes we're dead. Well, at the end of this year, and when I talk to you about a moment about the Feast of Pentecost and what we're doing with the package to the Pope, the dead shall rise, are rising. So clearly, that system of believing that our bodies shall rise at the end of days and that that system that was replacing the concept that we can live more than once as a control mechanism, as a government, a control of the mind had more than one purpose. Now I, exp I explain those two things because I'm always mindful that when we are brought up and we feel a resonance in the words of, of scripture that whenever a new idea or a challenging idea is raised, we can get a certain angst in our belief system because it can sometimes, if it's not presented with the utmost of respect, be considering a challenge of faith. It's not a challenge of faith. It's a validation of faith. It's a growth of faith. It's a reinforcement of faith. The dead shall rise. The fundamental belief of all Christians, Muslims and Jews is a true promise that is going to come true. So when we speak about the ability that we can live more than once, that our mind is immortal, our spirit is immortal, clearly, and that this flesh vessel is not the last time we may live, this is not a contradiction of the word of God or the word of the divine creator or the word of Allah or the word of the divine creator or any, any, the great power, any word we ascribe to the absolute. It is an understanding that we are here, that our spirit chooses for a very important reason, chooses in many cases to experience life more than once through a unique mind. And mind chooses to experience awareness of life and beyond for more than one reason. And what could that reason be? Because if we can understand the why, then maybe we can believe that you will never die. And this is not the last time. And if they kill your flesh body, it's not the last time that your spirit may choose to be here. They can do nothing to you but trick you. Nothing to you but try and control your mind. Well, what 
could be the ultimate, ultimate question. The answer, sorry, 